Ted Cruz is in a real race and fight for another term this fall. All right, let me explain. So on Tuesday, the Cook Political Report with Amy Walter, which is the most prominent political handicapping, uh, nonpartisan political handicapping site in the country, moved the Texas Senate race, where Cruz is uh, running for another term, from likely Republican to lean Republican. Now, it's not in their toss-up category yet, but in lean Republican, which suggests the race is getting closer. I want to make the case for why it's a real race first and then give you a few counterpoints on why Cruz might ultimately win. Let's talk about why it's a real race first. Okay, Um, Democrats recruited a really good candidate. Uh, Colin Allred is a former NFL player. Uh, He is a member of Congress from uh, the Dallas area. He has run a really nice campaign. He has uh, positioned himself well as sort of a moderate Uh, He has raised a ton of money. He and Cruz at this point are basically even in the money chase, which is great for a challenger running against a well-known incumbent like Cruz. So Democrats did the best they could. And and by the way, Allred didn't have a serious primary challenge. So Democrats did a really nice job in getting someone in that race who could be competitive at the end. All right. So that's point one. Point two, Texas is not Texas of 2024 is not Texas of 2012 or Texas of 2008, the state is slowly but surely getting more friendly toward Democrats. So in 2016, Donald Trump won Texas by nine points. In 2020, Donald Trump won Texas by 5.6 points, so a three-point drop. My guess is Donald Trump is going to win Texas again, but I don't know. He's not going to win it by 12. You know, maybe he wins it by six or five or maybe even four. So it's moving um, in that direction. And then there's Cruz, which I think is, while Colin Allred is a good candidate, I think this is a a referendum on Ted Cruz. In 2018, Uh, the last time Ted Cruz ran for uh, re-election, he beat Beto O'Rourke, a a congressman, uh, 51% to 48%. Now, uh, that race drew massive amounts of national attention. O'Rourke was seen as a potential future Democratic national uh, candidate. He actually, he, O'Rourke, actually outspent Cruz 74 million to 40 million in that race. Now, he came close Ted Cruz won. You only got to win by one to win. Ted Cruz won. But that suggests to me that there is a big chunk of vote in the state that does not like Ted Cruz and does not want to vote for him. And some of those people are Republicans. So what's changed in between now and then and now? The big thing, and if you forgot this, I'm going to remind you, in February 2021, Texas was hit with a huge ice storm and huge cold snap. Uh, there was freeze everywhere. They had massive electricity outages. Remember what Ted Cruz did? He went on vacation with his family to Cancun. Now, it was found out because people saw him dragging a bag through the airport. Reporters saw him dragging a bag through the airport. He eventually came back from Cancun, uh, Mexico, <clears throat> to deal with the crisis in the state. But that is a really bad look that has absolutely lingered with voters. And it's the kind of thing that does kind of cut across typical party lines. You know, even if you're a Republican who generally votes Republican, the idea that one of the two state senators went to a sunny climb while you were freezing and didn't have electricity and you were worried about you or a loved one uh, living, you know, being able to just continue on, is not a good look for Ted Cruz. So I think that's the central thing. The other thing is, and the Cook Report noted this in their write-up, is abortion is different, right? Uh, Texas has an extremely restrictive abortion law. Now, obviously, with Roe v. Wade being thrown out at the national level, the suburban women in, in and around Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Those are people Ted Cruz usually wins and he needs, and the abortion issue is a tough one for him given where the uh, Republican Party in Texas is at the moment. So add all that up, good Democratic candidate, state is moving slowly but surely toward Democrats, uh, and probably that will continue. Money is basically even between Cruz and Allred. The Cancun thing, huge problem for Cruz, still lingering in people's mind. And then abortion is kind of an X factor. And I think there's a case to be made that Allred is there. 
Now, I do think he probably needs a screw-up, medium to large size screw-up by Cruz and let, to win, and let me explain why. So I went and looked at this. There are 27 statewide elected offices in Texas. That includes the, all the members of the state Supreme Court. Yes, they elect, thank you, Thumb, they elect members of the state Supreme Court. Very weird. And it includes the Railroad Commission. Yes, in Texas, there are one, two, three railroad commissioners who oversee the railroad, I guess. Um, all 27 of those people are Republicans. And obviously that includes the governor, lieutenant governor, the attorney general, the uh, commissioner of ag, the chief justice of the Supreme Court. Like, all, all of these people are Republicans. And what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that it's still a pretty Republican state. Yes, it's moving a little bit away from Republicans and more to Democrats, but it's still a pretty Republican state. And then there's the fact that it's a presidential year. So 2018 was a midterm election, lower turnout, uh, that is, uh, you know, so in a state that's friendly to Republicans, lower turnout means less Republicans wind up voting. Uh, that will not be the case this time, right? Uh, there is going to be heavy, I assume, heavy turnout for the presidential race in Texas and everywhere else. Um, that will drive most rank and file Republicans to the polls. And most of them are going to be Ted Cruz voters. The real question is how many aren't. Um, so, if you combine just the sort of still Republican nature of the state with the likelihood that Trump wins it uh, and drives out Republican turnout, I still think that Cruz has to screw something up for All Red to win. Um, could it be some sort of... Uh, uh, live hot mic moment. Sure. Could it be an ad that really galvanizes people either for or against Cruz? Could it be something Trump says or does that hurts the top of the ticket in the state? Always a possibility. But I think it's going to need to be something, not a tiny development, but at least a medium sized development to get all read from 47 or 48, which I think is probably where he would end up without that development to the 50 ish percent. I think it's pretty easy to see already getting somewhere between 47, 48, and it's really hard and probably extremely expensive for national Democrats to get him to 50. So we'll see. Again, uh, if they don't win Texas and they don't win the Florida Senate race, then uh, Democrats almost certainly will be in the minority come 2025 in the Senate because um, West Virginia is already a Republican pickup. Montana seems to be headed in that direction, and I think Ohio is a, a, a toss-up. So, um it's in Democrats' interest to try to make this a real race. I think it is close to a very, very competitive race, but I still give Cruz the edge, even though I do now see a path for Colin Allred. Uh, thank you, as always, for listening. Um, I'm going to try and do more Senate stuff as we get closer to the election because I think, you know, the race for the Senate majority is super, super important as well as the presidential race, which I'll continue to talk about. So as always, four things. One, uh, subscribe to this channel. Just hit the subscribe button. It's easy. It's free. Uh, two, like this video. Again, easy, easy and free. Hit the thumbs up. Three, uh, comment on this video. Do it for the algorithm. Come on, people. And uh, four, tell 10 friends. Or if you only have five friends, tell five friends and five enemies. I'll take it either way. Just make it add up to 10. All right, everyone, take care. See you tomorrow.